it's really going to bless your heart. So I'm going to ask you to stand as we get ready to. Those of you who are, who have really been spending time in your prayer closet, those of you who have been spending time with the Holy Spirit, you are going to, your spirit is going to agree with what's going to happen this morning. Those of you who maybe spend time with God once a week alone, you may be wondering what's happening those of you who have the Holy Spirit and and you have really been seeking the face of God, I promise you this is going to agree with your spirit. It's actually going to almost identify what's been taking place in your personal devotion. I'm going to tell you um, very honestly that my life has changed. And I'm going to tell you what made it change. I've been saved a long time. But I'm going to tell you right now, I, I have made a vow that I do not want to live this life and get to the end and see Jesus' face and hear him say, you did not do everything I called you to do. Lately, I've been having a, I don't know what has been taking place. I was sharing with my wife, which I appreciate and thank God for her. And I just told her, I said, I said, babe, something is something has changed in my life. And this hasn't been just the last month or this has been going on for years, but it seemed like now I'm understanding it. So my assignment today, and I have never, ever struggled when I had to speak in my life. Normally, God would say, I want you to talk about this topic and I just be, I'm like, all right, I'm ready. This has been the week that I have struggled the most with what I got to talk about because it started with me and the moment I got it, he said, now I want you to talk, tell them about it. And what happened in my life, I'm seeing God do miracles in my life. I've seen him do stuff in my life that's actually I've been afraid to tell people because, you know, everybody won't celebrate so I just keep it to myself, just in my inner circle. I just tell them some of the things God has been doing. Because I'm like, why is all this happening? And God says, because you're coming back to the place where I really desire. And I'm going to tell you right now, I went to, I was at an event. And I, I told my wife this. I was at an event. And this is what started it. I was at an event about maybe five years ago. And at this event praise break uh, broke out and the people started shouting all around the church it was at another place and I was sitting there and I'm clapping I'm getting my praise on and I, I, I lie to you not I'm standing in God's sacred place and the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said what are they doing and I'm like they praising you he said what is that just like that and I heard it and I was like this is confusing me these people are out here dancing and running and he said, what are they doing? And I said, God, they are praising you. And he said, what you call praise is not praise in my sight. This is what he had told me. And it's changed my life because I thought that was what was acceptable to God. And then and he began to show me. He said, uh-uh. Half of this stuff. Half of this stuff we have called praise is not even acceptable and this changed my life so it brought me to less praise and more prayer because in prayer I begin to hear what he really want in praise I only hear what I want so I have to tell you something that's personal to me and it's hard this is why I struggled because I wanted to, I had something that was all planned out that I wanted to talk to y'all about. And I, I was like, ooh, they, they go like this. This is going to be cool. And the Holy Spirit said, if you do not say what I told you to say, the blood is on your hands. I said, I'm saying it. <laughs> I, ain't gonna, I ain't taking none of y'all blood with me. So I pray that y'all pray for me this morning because um, something is going to happen in you. 
And I'm telling you right now, I'm up here trembling because I know this is from God. I so I know it to the point where if nobody said amen, I would walk out of here smiling. So I need y'all to pray for me, amen. God, we thank you so much for what you're about to do this morning. Our hearts is open to receive your instructions for this day. Help us to do things your way. Father, I'm asking you right now that you help me to say this as plain and simple like I'm supposed to. I need you, Lord God, to confirm your word with signs and wonders today. Let your kingdom back up your word today, God. We thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to just read to you real quick um, Jeremiah chapter 17. Jeremiah 17, verse 9 and 10. I'm going to talk about the acceptable heart. The acceptable heart is what I'm going to talk about. And I'm going to start. It's going to be a lot of scriptures, so I do pray that when you leave church today, that you go home and reference every scripture that I'm saying so you know that I'm not off. Please don't just take my word. Please go to the Bible and see for yourself to confirm what the Holy Spirit is saying. Verse 9 and 10 of Jeremiah 17 says the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it I the Lord search the heart I try the reins even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing I'm going to read that one more time the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing. Amen. You may have your seat. To get to the part where I'm going to talk about the acceptable heart, I have to walk you through kind of how he took me through all these scriptures to to let me to confirm to me that this is what he is speaking so the reason why I went to Jeremiah is because what Jeremiah exposes is that you cannot trust your heart you cannot trust it because your heart can be very deceitful Um, what I mean by deceitful is that the heart has many things going on inside there I don't know if it's about two years ago um, or last year. I spoke a message talking about um, the heart. And I, I, I don't know if you remember, but I had like a little cart. And I had those items in there. I have to come, go back to that in a way because this is the issues that we're having. We tend to forget that everything we're doing, everything for the Lord that we're doing, the heart has to be the focus of why we do what we do we got to examine it because it is the thing that either God accepts or he rejects it's the heart Okay. now I got to start off by explaining what the heart is so nobody get confused with this the heart that beat because that is not this heart that the Bible is talking about the heart that beats is just a physical organ that will go to that will die with that body of yours when you you know pass away so that's not what God is talking about there's another part of the way he's made you that he calls it the heart in science they call it the subconscious mind this is one of the most crucial parts of your makeup it is the area that I have ignored most of my life because I didn't even know that this was this was so I used to watch everything. I let so many things get into that part of me that when I got the revelation that this was the heart, I had so much junk in me that I'm like, wow, I want to serve God, but I got a lot of other stuff that I've been accumulating over the years that has gotten into this heart, gotten into the subconscious mind. So the reason why I started by saying reading Jeremiah is because when it says it is deceitful 
Deceit means that it is a part of you that will bring out things in you. Sometimes that was passed to you. That was um, from your old life. Because what goes into your subconscious mind is things from your habits. This is the area that keeps all your addictions, all your habits, and all these things is in that subconscious mind. So you're subconsciously just looking at me right now. You're subconsciously um, got your legs sitting a certain way. That's all habit. You're doing it without, you're like on autopilot. And so this is the part that God is concerned with because this is the part that controls the body that we see right now. So when you see a person sitting next to you, just know that that body is really not the person. That is just the shell that's holding or carrying this heart. Okay? Now, this is going to get good in a minute because trust me, you're going to really hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. Now, when he says this is deceitful, it's because inside that heart is where the fight is. God and the devil both want that part of you because that is the driver. If you don't believe me, uh, Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7 says, As a man thinketh in his where? It didn't say as a man thinketh in his mind. So the heart has some thoughts. So we see that this heart that scripture is talking about carries thoughts. This is why Proverbs chapter 4 says, Guard your heart with all diligence. Because out of that spot flows the issues of everything that's going on in your life. Now you want to see, if I was the devil, I would say, well, if the issues of life come from that place, that's the place I'm trying to go to. Because if I can get that place messed up, there are issues that are going to automatically be messed up. So every attack in your life today is to get to that heart. You thought it was a car accident was because the devil didn't want you to have a new car. The devil don't care about that car. He used the car to get to your heart. (laughs) He using the lie to get to the heart. Everything is trying to get to the heart. Now, let me tell you what the Holy Spirit was showing with me. Because when I was in prayer, I, I kid you not, when the Lord began to start showing me, he says... You tend to forget something. This is how he said it to me. You're ten, you tend to forget something that I do not look at outward things like you do. I look at hearts. Every time God bless a person or reject a person, it was because of hearts. Hearts is everything. So if the heart is not managed properly, you could be rejected by God and don't know it. This is how scary it is. Because you can literally be lifting up your hands and be rejected. Because God is not looking at the hands. He's looking at the what? So if the heart is deceitful and allowing all type of evil things to happen here and you're doing this, is God accepting that? Now, we may say, well, we serve a loving God. Yes, you do. But this is why the scripture is very clear about what God searches Because there is a scripture in Matthew that says, Blessed are the pure in what? For they shall see God. It didn't say anybody go see him. Now, you want to know why that scripture is there? Because if the heart is not pure, if God showed up in your life, you can't see him because you see all the deceit and the junk that is still in your heart so he says if you could just get your heart pure you can see me in a lot of different things so in my prayer time i was praying i said okay holy spirit now this is the funny part and this is probably where you're going to connect with this and then i'm gonna move to the next scripture in my prayer i'm talking to god about all the things that i want to do for him that things that was in my heart to do and when the lord spoke to me he said listen I don't want you to write out anything else you want to do for me for a while. He told me, he said, I want you to examine your heart and motives. So I said, okay, I'm thinking, yes, this is good. So I'm writing down, you know, my heart and motives. And I'll kid you not, maybe for about three months, y'all, can I be honest and transparent? I started having the most craziest thoughts. And I'm 
like, hold up. God, I want to be pure. But my mind is, I'm, I don't know why my mind is thinking all these crazy, stupid thoughts. Where is these coming from? And then I started rebuking the devil, y'all. I was rebuking him. I was calling the name of Jesus. I was saying everything. And guess what? Them thoughts ain't go nowhere. I said, okay, something's wrong here. I know I got the power. And then the Lord said, that is not the devil showing you that. <laughs> that is me actually purifying your heart. Because it was already in there. The stuff that you're seeing now in your mind was already in there. It was deceiving you. Because I was covering it with this. And he said, put your hands down for a second. And let me show you what you're praising on top of. And when he began to show me some of the thoughts and stuff and the, and the unforgiveness and the bitterness I was having, I am telling you, y'all, I'm tell, I feel the glory of God on me so strong. I am telling you, I have never repented so much in my life. Every morning I wake up, Jesus, forgive me for that thought. I used to think, oh, no, that's just a thought. No, wait a minute. The Holy Spirit is showing me. He's trying to purify my heart. And when it comes to the surface, I'm actually closer to purification. When I don't see it, you need to be scared. Because I don't care if any of you go to the hospital and you have a poison in you. If that doctor, if that doctor go inside you and you see the poison come out, and he says, there it is, there's the poison, it's, now he's wiping it away. The fact that you saw the poison shouldn't make you mad. It's a sign you're being healed. So seeing it is actually one of your first signs of healing. We are running away from seeing what's in our heart. That's why he said the heart is deceitful. Because it really don't want you to see what's really hiding in there. But guess who knows about what's in your heart? The devil. So this is a revelation that the Holy Spirit gave me. Y'all better write this down. I'm telling you, write it down. Because you're going to need this for the next 30 years of your life. This is the revelation the Holy Spirit told me. He said, the devil will never tempt you with what's not in your heart. All his temptations is going after what's in your heart. That's all he can work with. He will never tempt me to smoke reefer because it's not in my heart. He ain't going to, I'm, I'm sorry. All y'all can come up here with 50 rolls. <laughs> y'all can blaze right in front of me. I'm just going to be fanning. I'm like, can you keep on, just keep on walking. I'm good. So the devil just sit back and you watch, man, what's in their heart? Because if I can just send them something that their heart already, is, you know, the heart starts to say, oh, hey, I remember that when I was a child. Oh, let me, so the devil's like, oh, okay. Oh, that's your thing. Okay. You got pride in you. Okay, this is good. This is going to be a good one. I see that little pride in that one. So the devil now sends all these crazy things your way, not to distract you, but he's trying to get that pride to surface for this reason, because he knows that if that pride is not dealt with properly, and we know we serve a God who looks at hearts, God is not going to accept us. When I say us, I'm not saying he's not going to accept us as his child, but the blessings of the Lord ain't going to flow like it should, because there is something in our heart that's blocking the blessing. And the devil studies it because he knows that if I can find what's hidden in that heart, I'm going to hit them with the same attack over and over and over and over again. So if so, the, the honest person, the honest person would say, God, I saw that there was some lust in me. I saw there was some pride in me. I saw there was some bitterness in me. The, the, the person who God loves is a person who go to him in prayer and say, you know what, Holy Spirit, thank you for showing me that I'm hateful. And I thank you this morning for cleaning me from the spirit of hate. God says, you're more acceptable than a person who walk around with all this hate talking about, you know what? Pfft. I ain't got to pray about that. That's the, I'm just human. Worshippers get on their face and on their face and say, God, I get this lust out of me. Some of the people God says, I'm going to give you grace. I'm going to give you mercy. You want to know why? Because you are honest. You are coming at to me with a pure heart. 
So when the heart is pure, God says, listen, I can work with a pure heart of individual. And I will even help you with your pure heart because you understand that you got some issues in there. So all of us, raise your hand, raise your hand if over the years you've allowed some crazy stuff to enter to your heart. Okay, all of us, nobody here is innocent. I'm talking about we've allowed it through friends, we've allowed it through TV shows, we've allowed it through stuff. Any form of repetition, these are the ways that your heart has been affected. So this is why sometimes you get angry. You don't even know why you met, why you got angry. And you're like, why do I got this angry spirit? Well, you've been around angry people all your life. It just, it just got in your heart. You mad for no reason. You just screaming. You're like, why am I so angry? Well, take a look at what has been hiding in there. And when the Holy Spirit come inside you, he is not look, telling you to look at your neighbor's uh, heart. He's examine yourself. So I have, I, have, I have some news to tell everybody. Everybody want to hear the news? I cannot say nothing about none of y'all. You know what I? You want to know why? I'm so busy on my knees examining my heart. I don't have time to look at what you're going through. <laughs> it's too much. I have so much stuff back from the day that I'm like, wait a minute. That little thing still stick. Uh-uh. Holy Spirit brought that thing out. And I'm like, wow. So I thought worship was a time for me to just be in God's presence and hug him. And, uh, and my worship now is becoming a place of, Lord, I'm sorry. I can't believe I had that in there. And he said, you are more righteous now by admitting that you see it. So don't be deceived and think pure in heart means you're walking around here and you're perfect. That ain't what pure in heart means. Pure heart means, listen, you have took your laser lenses and you took it off everybody else's stuff and you put it right on yours and now you're going to God in prayer saying, Lord, search my heart. This is why God kept David. Because David was like, I don't care about Saul. I don't care about the children of Israel right now. It is me, Lord, created me a clean heart. God said, I'll keep you with your crazy self. I will keep you because you are honest enough to come to me. And you ain't blame nobody else. You said against thee and against thee only have I. So God calls him a worshiper. So based on God's standard for worship, worshipers look like honest people who ain't perfect but honest in prayer. That's what worship really looked like to God. Because God is searching hearts. Now I got a news shadow. Let me tell you what he was telling me in my prayer closet. He told me this week, and this is, and I don't even need notes for this because that thing has changed my life forever. He told me this week, he said, I'm coming back soon. He said, you have a short time span on this earth. Your time span is so short that you cannot get caught up with this foolish stuff that's happening. This stuff is, this little stuff that you think is important, it is not important. Don't get distracted by the stupid stuff you're going through at your job. The fact that you don't have enough money. God said, don't get distracted because you don't even realize that some of you, and I'm, I'm just telling you what he said. Some of you, you don't have long. You don't have much two years. Some of you got five years. Some of you got 10 years. Some of you got 30 years to live here on this earth. Your clock is going like this and you're worrying about a bill at your job. You are in about a neighbor who talked about you and your life is about to shut. And the thing God is after is your heart. And you were in about a paycheck. Now watch this. Let me show you. I saw something on TV and it changed my life. There was a guy. They were showing a guy who was a parachuter. This guy would jump off the parachute with his parachute thing on all the time. All the time. He would jump out the parachute, just jump out the parachute and just do another hobby. And one time, back in 1988, those, these new cameras came out where you can jump off and you can kind of watch yourself as you skydive. So he actually bought one of these new cameras. The guy was so excited about the new camera, it was just a gadget. He gets on the plane and gets ready to jump off and he makes sure the camera is hooked up. He's focused on the camera. He's focused on the camera, making sure everything's good. And the guy jumps off the airplane, right? And he's looking, and you can see on the, air, um, on the camera how he's just flying down, flying down. 
And then all of a sudden he realized, I forgot my parachute. And the man died because he started to focus on what was insignificant and left what was most important. And the Holy Spirit is saying, some of you have left what is most important and you are so focused on the camera and God said, you forgot your parachute. He said he is so close to come back that some of us are so distracted by the camera that we are, some of us are going to be sitting here. Some of us are going to be sitting here saying, Jesus, where'd you go? And Jesus is like, listen, hold up. I know you came to church. I know you were faithful. You came to church, but I never knew you. And the reason why he's saying that is because many of us got distracted with the little camera. Oh, look at the new camera I got. And forgot the parachute. That's called distraction. And this is why the devil know if I don't let God's people know about the heart, they'll get distracted with how high they jump in church. They'll get distracted with how they dress. They'll get distracted with, oh, did you hear about sister so-and-so and brother so-and-so? That is all distraction to keep you from your heart. And God says, I'm looking at hearts. I'm not looking at all this other stuff y'all talking about. So when God is looking at you right now, he don't care nothing about what you got on. I can tell you right now, he don't care nothing about if you got red, white, or blue on. He ain't stunning. He's looking right at your heart. We up here giving tithes and offerings, and we waving them like this in the open, and God says, wait a minute, I'm not even looking at this. I'm looking at the motive behind the individual. And that's proven in Scripture. There was a Scripture where Jesus was literally at the temple, up here like this, and people were giving. And a lady had almost nothing. Walks and give her little two mites, her little thing. In a, and God said, she gave more than all these other folk. Why did he say that? Because he wasn't looking at the amount. He was looking at this. So he has brought me back to a place where I got to get my parachute. Forget the camera. I ain't about to go all do all this serving and going to church and then get to the destination and miss it. The time is too the time. Listen, we're too close. So you almost got to go back to your life and say, I need to start making sure that I didn't make the camera my focus because I need to get back to the parachute and the parachute is the heart. God is looking at the heart. So in first Samuel 16, you have a prophet who goes to a, anoint the next king. He gets in front of all of Jesse's sons and says, surely the Lord's anointed is on this one. And God says, oh, duh, 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 duh. no, I refuse this one. Man, look on the outward. He says, but I look at hearts. And God will do something with people who got their hearts right. And this is where we get messed up, y'all. I'm, I'm just being honest. This is where we get messed up because we look at things outwardly and then we judge it. Oh, this is what happened to this person. So God must be angry with them. Oh, she did this. Oh, God must be. And you have no idea that that could actually be God actually moving that individual because their heart is right. Look at Joseph. If, us, if Joseph was in our church right now and Joseph went to prison, everybody here would believe part of his wife. Yep, I knew Joseph did it. Look, if God was on his side, he wouldn't be in jail. The man went to jail because his heart was right. That's too deep for some of y'all. Because <laughs> y'all keep thinking, y'all keep looking on the outward appearance. And there, you may be sitting next to the one of the most blessed persons. And you look thinking, well, they can't be blessed. Look at their shoes. Okay. God is looking at them saying, that's going to be the person that you will be buying your shoes from in a couple of months. Because I'm about to bless them with their own business. You up here looking all deep and got nice shoes, but in debt. <laughs> this person sitting here, busted shoes right now, but pure heart. I'm going to bless them so good because I know they know what to do with it. So God is doing a heart check with us this morning. Because he is examining our motives for why we do what we do. And this all started five years ago when I went to that church. And he said, what are they doing? He was basically telling me the motive behind why they were praising God was not acceptable to him. I didn't want to hear that. Now, every time I clap my hands before I clap because I like the beat, I'm like, Lord, is 
there anything in here that you ain't going to accept? Because if you ain't going to accept it, I might as well sit my tail down and, and, and get on my text. If you ain't going to accept it, why do it? So I'm not about to do no aerobics for God to say, what was that? I'm not about to lift up my hands if he looking at me saying, that's, a good, that's good that you stretched. <laughs> I want God to be pleased with it. Psalms 51. Go to Psalms 51. Psalms 51 verses. Let me give you this around because I want you to put it on that back screen. But I want those of you who have your Bibles to go to it. Psalms 51 and 17. I'm going to show you right here in the scripture. Um, you can go to verse 16 uh, to Aranda. I'm going to read this because I, I, I want you to really deceive. Look what David discovered. David discovered something that many of us haven't discovered yet. I'm clear now why God kept this guy. Because David was discovering things about the heart of God that a lot of us who spirit feel haven't discovered. Look what he said. For thou desires not sacrifice, else I will give it. He knew God's heart so well. He said, if sacrifice was the only thing you wanted, I would have gave you that. But he said, I understand that that is not what you desire. So he keeps going. He says, if that was what I what you wanted, I would have gave you that. But look what he says. Thou delightest not in burnt offerings. He said, you don't even delight in the burnt offerings that people are giving you. So he says, I'm not going to give you that. But I got some good news for all of us in this room. Look at what he do like. Verse 17 says, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. A broken and contrite. Y'all see that next word? Heart. Oh God, thou would not despise. God says, you give me a heart. You give me a person who's willing to open up their heart before me and show all the nastiness, all the good things, everything. He says, I cannot despise that person. He said, I will go closer to that individual who understands that I draw close to hearts. So he says, don't just draw nigh to me. He says, draw nigh to me with your heart. Let me explain that because many people say, well, I'm going to go draw nigh to God. Well, he says, listen, you draw nigh to God, he'll draw nigh to you, right? But also, you got to make sure when you draw nigh to him that you're not just drawing nigh to him and your heart is not there. Because he says, many people honor me with their lips and draw close to me, but their heart is where? So the act of you coming to church is really not the sign that you're drawing close. It's this part. And when I tell you right now, when all of us die in this room, the only part of you that ain't going to eternity is this body. Everything else is being packaged in a new vessel. <laughs> now you want to see why he's trying to get that heart right? Do you know there's probably people right now in eternity, and, and I've never been there, so I'm not, you know, make a doctrine of it, but I really believe when it says your soul, your soul will continue to live. And I just have a firm belief. I don't want to get there to find out that I'm going that you did and you start seeing everybody you know and you remember everybody's names. I don't want to get to, to eternity and start realizing, wait a minute, I still recognize her. That was the lady who sat next to me in church. Now imagine if that's true if we're in heaven. Imagine how hard that could be for people who are in the other spot. I remember that man preached to me. I remember that guy came to me on Jefferson Street and told me Jesus was coming, but I was just too busy, you know, drinking Johnny Walker Red. <laughs> the fact that you can remember all the instances that God tried to give you a chance is the heart, is the thing that hurts the most. So he has got us here in this short period of time to get some heart cleansing done because something about this heart I feel is eternal. Because if it wasn't, he wouldn't be so concerned with his heart. This is why that heart is so important. So he says, I need you to guard this with all diligence. I don't care what you got to do. I don't care if you got to turn certain programs off TV because that stuff is affecting your heart. So he says, do whatever you got to do to get your heart ready to see me face to face in peace. 
Okay? Now, let me give you this. Then we're going to get ready. Verse, um, I want to take you to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4. Now, the reason why it says the sacrifices of God are of a broken spirit, of uh, a contrite heart, and thou would not suffice. Because in Hebrews 4, it showed me something very powerful about Cain and Abel. So Hebrews 11, verse 4. I want to read this to you because this is something that I saw. Which made me even more go to God and say, Lord, get my heart right. It says, by faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. By which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts and, be, and by it he being yet dead, yet speaking. What that scripture said was, by faith, Abel and Cain, both of them brought sacrifices to God. One was accepted, the other one was, was, was rejected. As a class, somebody tell me why was Cain's offering rejected and Abel's was accepted? Somebody say it. It was all about the heart. Did Cain bring something to God? So we understand it's not the physical thing. So the acceptable thing from God's perspective was the motive behind what you brought. The motive behind the dance that you shout. The motive behind the lifting up your hands. The motive behind you doing everything you do. God is looking at the motive. And so here by faith, Abel took his offering and gave it to God with the heart. Cain took the thing and gave it. And don't get me wrong, I can get into the theology about, okay, this was a blood and this was grain and, and cain, that, all that, but still it goes back to the heart. The heart is everything. So we can't get so caught up in the what. We got to get caught up in the motive behind. So with that in mind, I'm going to take you to another part. Because in this part here, when he says in Matthew 5, I'm sorry, um, let's go to Psalms 24. Let me, let me give you this. Psalms 24 chapter. And I want to read verses 3 to 6. Am I helping anybody? Because in a minute, all of us is going to go back to God and say, God, we want our hearts correct. Because I'm going to tell you right now, this is, we're too late in the game now to be hoping. I ain't hoping no more. Listen, I had to, I, I'm telling you right now, I cannot. After this week, I'm so clear that the Holy Spirit is after your heart everything that's happening in your life he is trying to pull out those weeds out the heart because he wants you to see him very clearly because you are about to exit this earth and you about to see him face to face forever and he is trying to get you so focused on the parachute that you get so get off this little camera that you got when I saw that documentary, that thing did something to me. This guy, he just spit all... That's why the scripture says, set your affections on things above. Not on things on the earth. The, these little things that we just... We spend all of our energy, all of our attention is on this job, on these people. And God says, that is cameras. That's only but a little moment. You got to start setting your affection on your eternity because you are about to exit. Too many people dying for us to be sitting over talking about, well, I got another... You know, I'm just going to live loosely. No, no, you... Your, your clock is <laughs> look in the mirror that I tell you <laughs> verse 3 this is going to tell you why the hearts is important verse 3 Psalms 24 and 3 I hope you've got your Bibles it says who shall ascend unto the heel of the Lord or who shall stand in his holy place verse 4 he that have clean hands and a pure heart who have not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. deceitfully. Verse 5. This person who got the pure heart shall receive the blessing from the Lord. And righteousness from the God of his salvation. Verse 6. This is the generation of them that seek him and seek thy face, O Jacob. What he was saying was, there is blessings that follow people who have a pure heart. There are certain blessings that only pure hearted people is going to get. Now, I got to clarify what pure heart mean again. Pure heart means you understand that there is still some stuff in your heart from your past. And you are honest with God in prayer alone. Saying, God, can you please help me? Because I still don't forgive 
so and so, so and so, so. I mean, when you start saying it out your mouth, you get free. This, I love him in the name of Jesus. Stop lying. You don't love that person yet. That's what's keeping us deceptive. That's why I said the heart is deceitful. Because you will start lying and say, in the name of Jesus, I forgive you in the love of the Lord. That, that ain't no love of the Lord. <laughs> the Lord. <laughs> Man, listen. You, you know how many times I've been lied on and been falsely accused? I had to really forgive a lot of people. And I'm going to be honest, I ain't want to. Some of them, I was like, Lord, can I just keep this one just in case? No. No, but... <laughs> I'm serious. It was some that I, it took me longer. I'll be honest. Some it was easy. I was like, you know what? They ain't mean no good. I'm just gonna. But it was some. You know, I had to make a couple of trips around that altar. You know, <laughs> in the name of Jesus. <laughs> uh, I have to pay in the name of Jesus. Because <laughs> it, it stung. It got a little. It, it got in that heart. And I was spending all my time focusing on the camera worried about what they did why they did it I can't believe it was them why would they do something to somebody like I spent all my energy doing that that I looking back and I'm realizing I'm skydiving without a parachute because I'm so busy focusing on this small little thing when he just said just forgive them and come to me now if you have a problem forgiving this person that's why we have to go and put our faith in, in, in righteousness in Jesus Christ because he's the one who got the power to help you forgive so this is why he says be ye clothed with Jesus Christ you put him on you guess what because he's already forgiven people the forgiveness is in him so you put him on so you have the ability to forgive these other folk this is how he helps you when you're honest because that heart will lie to you that heart will say oh I'm set free <laughs> and then we get crazy we start trying to you know, do different different things to show God we strong. I'm strong, Jesus. I, Lord, I'm so delivered, God. I'm so delivered, God. I can go to this bar, and I ain't gonna drink a thing. And you walk in the bar, and you keep walking in there. I'm so delivered. I can walk up to that bar stool and won't drink nothing. <laughs> and you sit down. I'm so delivered. I can drink one glass. And won't get tipsy. And you and you drink the one glass. I'm so delivered. <laughs> I can drink four of these and, and won't get tipsy because I got the Holy Ghost inside. I'm so delivered. <laughs> That's foolishness. You don't want to, you know, if God set you free, stay away from that bar. You know. <laughs> I ain't talking about that type of foolishness. What I'm saying is that. You go to God and be honest and say, okay, God, I'm going to stay away from this bar because um, there was something in my heart that, that draws to this. And I, I want my heart pure. So, God, I'm asking you to help me to stay from this bar. I'm asking you to help me to stay from this person because every time I get around this person, God, I just feel like, I don't know, I just get weak around them and I just keep, they can say anything and I just mess with God. Help me to stay around this friend because every time I get around this friend, I just start cursing. God, help me. to. You start being honest in prayer. God will say, oh, okay. Now you're honest enough about where your weakness is. My strength now can be made perfect where? Because you know where your weakness is at, let me give you some strength. This is why Paul, that's why he said this to Paul, because Paul said, Lord, three times I'm coming to you about this weakness. And God said, trust me, because you are clear about the weakness, I'm going to give you some strength to help you with that. But the ones who walk around and act like they don't have it, you are the ones who are limiting God's grace on your life. Lord help so you all in, here, in this room all of us in this room God is so concerned about the investment so when he died on the cross for you for us he wasn't just on that cross because he was just um, you know bored or whatever he was on that cross because he first of all he gave him his whole life everything we're doing is centered around Jesus he gives his life on Calvary's cross for us goes up to heaven, sends his spirit back, puts his spirit on the inside of us, and you think he put his spirit on the inside of us just for to be in church, church, in church shaking and stuff like this? You think he did all that hanging on the cross for us to run around? You, do you really think that was the end goal? 
He did not do all that. Now, that is awesome when we do it in the Lord and we do it and rejoice in the Lord. That is awesome. But what I'm saying is that if everything we do, the motive is not pure, God is just looking at people playing from his eyes, not mine. Because the only thing that's acceptable is when the heart is open and saying, God, listen, this is, I'm telling you, this is, you go all the scripture, every person God used, they were transparent in heart. They were very brutal with God about their weaknesses. They were very brutal with God about how much they needed them. They were very brutal with God about everything. So since this has happened to me, I have, I'm, this is why I have made a vow to myself. I said, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to lie to people. I'm going to do the best I can to be honest with people. It may even hurt people, but honesty is best. I said, God, I'm too close to leaving here to me to be lying to people. So let me be honest and just and, 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 and tell people the truth. The next thing I said is, Lord, every day, every time I see something rise up in my heart, instead of going and picking up and calling the prayer partner, I'm going into prayer and showing you myself that I see this thing. These are vows that I'm making to God because I just got to the point. I said, Lord, if you're the one looking at my heart, if you're the one who wants a pure heart, I'm going to need some help here. And all he's required for me is to search it. You know, there's a scripture that he says. He says in uh, 1 John, uh, Ron, can you put 1 John chapter 3 and, and 3 up? There's a scripture that, that touched me, that he's been showing me. He says a lot of my people they're waiting for me to do stuff that they have to do. Verse John chapter 3 verse 3 says, and every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself. It didn't say the Holy Spirit. He says, you go purify yourself if you have this hope to be as he is in verse 2. So he says what purify himself mean is that you you can't trust me, you can't cleanse yourself. Your job is to go to the cleanser and say, I this is where the dirt is. Help me, God. You don't have to wait for the pastor. You don't have to wait for the evangelistic team. You don't have to wait for the missionaries to call a prayer line for you to start purifying yourself. The moment you see that you got some issues, go to God and say, God, I just saw this thing. I don't know what, where that came from, but I don't want it there. Now, the urgency of everything I'm talking about comes from the fact that you are about to exit. You are literally about to exit this earth. So you got to get your heart right quick. And what's so scary is that in Revelation chapter 2, we see Jesus standing, knocking at the church, the doors of the church of Laodicea. He says, if any man hears my voice and open up, I'll come in. How did he get that far out? Because the heart has been shut up. We definitely gathered. The church has gotten bigger. We got more churches than we ever had in our life. But hearts got closer. The hearts got smaller, which locked God out. Now he's knocking, trying to get back in people's hearts. We're in church praising God. And God is on the outside knocking, saying, is anybody in there? Too? Can I get in? That's how Revelations 2 ends up. That's how the church ends up, locking Jesus out. And the way you lock him out is not by your praise. You lock him out here. I'm going to show you how you lock him out. The Holy Spirit wake you up at 4 o'clock in the morning to pray. Ah, give me the cover. Just that's a small form of locking out. Because he's trying to get in, but I don't have time, God. I'm too tired. The next lockout. I want you to go over. I want you to take that three hundred dollars and I want you to give it. This is the destiny. Satan, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I'm gonna, I'm going to the mall. <laughs> that's another way. We <laughs> if we keep doing that longer and longer and longer. When he do speak to you, you're going to be like, Satan, stop talking to me. And the more we keep doing that, our heart gets heavier and stonier and stonier and stonier to the point that for Jesus to get in, he actually got to go like this now. Um, is it okay that we spend time in prayer this week? At one point, you was like, man, God, every morning I'm praying. Now he's, is it, is it possible that I can talk to you about what's going on in your heart? He's so locked out. And when he got on me, he was telling me, listen, you're doing what I called you to do, but you just have one thing wrong. And I'm like, what, God? Because I want to I get better. He says, you will not give me all your heart. Because I've given him a lot of my heart.
That's why all through the Testament, love the Lord thy God with. I confess, I did not get it all. And the last few years and months, I've been saying, God, I want to give you all. And every time I keep saying that, something else surfaced out of my subconscious mind. I'm like, what was that? That was still hidden in there. So now I've got to take that out, and now I'm bringing it before him in prayer. Lord, help me with these thoughts. Help me with this. Help me with that. that I'm thinking, help me with the low self-esteem. Help me with whatever your thing is. You're bringing it before prayer. And then when that goes... You're like, I feel lighter. This is what the scripture says, lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily slow you down, beset you. So now you start feeling lighter until another thing comes up. Now you're like, another one? Hold up. <laughs> man, uh-huh. yeah, what else is in there? Did you, you put that one aside. Now you, you're free. You're, man, you feel the presence of God. And all of a sudden, a, an attack or something come and it surfaces another part of your attitude. And you're like, I didn't even know I felt like that about that person. This is what purification look like. This is what purify yourself look like. And until you can start saying things like this in prayer, God, help me with my bad attitude. Don't just say things like, oh, help me to be more like you. No, no. Say, help me with this bad attitude. Lord, I don't know why every time this person says something to me, I just cringe. I want to put, I just want to ball my fist. You can talk to God like that. This is what purification looked like because he is more pleased with that because that's what he's coming back for. He's coming back for a church without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. Now, I am going to give you an opportunity in a minute because what the Holy Spirit showed me last night, he said, the quicker the people will give me their heart, the quicker we're going to see the blessings that's going to fall on your life like never before. Some of us, are, our blessing is like right here. And the reason why he just can't rain on it like he wants to is because there is some weeds in our heart that we are just overlooking. Ah, that's not important. God can fit. God understand. And God is like, wait a minute. From his perspective, he sees your time span like this. From your perspective, you have a 40-year vision ahead of you. He already see what's about how you're about to exit this earth. And the urgency of what I felt of him saying I'm coming back. I said, I don't have time for nobody's foolishness. I'm, don't come to me with, did you hear about, I don't care. I got, I need to get my heart pure. I need to get my heart pure. I want to see Jesus face to face in peace. I do not want to get up there to find out that I missed exactly why I was put here. He gave me an assignment to get here. He he gave me an assignment and I'm here to do that assignment. If I don't do that assignment, guess what? He's going to call me wicked. Y'all don't want me to take you to Matthew 25, do you? The man who buried the one talent? Because that man who buried that one talent, there was something wrong with his heart. (laughs) So he said, oh, I was afraid. He took God's gift and buried it because of fear. And the Lord, the Lord, said, you, he didn't say, oh, I understand, my little child. He said, you wicked. Because you let your heart dictate what to do with what I gave you. And your heart was so deceitful that you didn't even know you was deceitful. The scary thing about Revelations is that he says, many of you don't even know that you are blind, wretched. That's the scary part is that he's saying that you don't, some of you don't even know it. So I don't know about you, but today is a day that we all repent back to God. Whether you feel like you're pure or not, we're repenting back to God today. I don't want nobody to leave this church and something happened and today be your last day and you start and and, and you're in the hospital and you're in the I'm not wishing that on nobody, but what I'm saying is nobody here can guess what's going to happen when we walk out these doors. And the last thing we should be focusing on is this little camera. Everybody here to make sure you got your parachute ready. Because I have some news for everybody. There is nobody in this room that's going to live for eternity here on this earth. You got to exit some way through the coming of the Lord or through death, one of the two. So it's best since you don't know the day or the hour for both. <laughs> it's best that we might as well, since we here, since we here, we might as well just do a heart check with the Holy Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit, I am not going to fight you no more. You start revealing to me that I got some issues. I'm not fighting no more. 
I'm going to be honest and say, God, I don't know why I have this, this, this thing in me that I just can't get rid of. And I promise you, if you start dedicating time and prayer time with the Holy Spirit, he's going to tell you why it got there, how to get rid of it. But a lot of times we don't give him that opportunity to speak. So this is what I'm going to ask you.